Welcome to the Dash 8 Q400 Systems Training Course Auxiliary Power Unit Module. In this module, we will talk about the Auxiliary Power Unit, or APU, including a general description, talk about its fuel system, and the electrical system, which is basically composed of a starter generator, the bleed air system, APU fire protection, and then we'll talk about the limits and normal and abnormal operations of the APU. The Dash 8 Q400 has an optional auxiliary power unit or APU available on the aircraft. That being said, there has never been a Q400 delivered without an APU, as it is an extremely useful piece of equipment. The auxiliary power unit is a small turbine engine mounted in the tail cone of the Q400. It can provide a self-contained source of electrical power or bleed air for ground operations. The APU has a screened air intake on the upper right side of the empennage right below the vertical stabilizer and the exhaust from the APU is ejected aft through a titanium tail cone. The APU is controlled and monitored from the APU control panel on the overhead panel. There are some additional controls available on the fire protection panel and also on the overhead panel. A caution light is also available on the caution and warning panel. The APU runs on fuel from the fuel tank in the left wing. A shutoff valve is located at the start of this fuel line. The status of the valve can be determined from two indicator lights on the fire protection panel. The shutoff valve opens whenever the APU system is powered on and is commanded closed under any of the following circumstances. When the APU is manually turned off by pressing the power switch light. When the APU shuts down automatically due to a detected fault. When a fire is detected in the APU or if the APU fire detection system is tested. And when the APU is off the ground as determined by the weight on wheels sensors. The APU fuel line runs along the outside of the cabin, outside the pressure vessel, to the APU located in the tail via a gravity-fed fuel pump that is attached to and driven by the APU gearbox whenever the APU is turning. The APU itself is managed by a full authority digital engine control, or FADEC. The FADEC controls the APU including managing the start process and fuel scheduling and monitoring for and reacting to failures. The APU electrical system consists of a starter generator connected to the APU and a generator control unit which controls and monitors the starter generator and its connection to the aircraft electrical system. When the APU starter button is pressed, power from the DC main buses is connected to the starter generator to initiate rotation of the APU. Power must already be available on the right DC main bus, either from batteries or another source, to start the APU. The previously mentioned FADEC then adds fuel when the APU reaches an appropriate speed and the APU is accelerated up to operating speed. When the APU reaches half its operating speed, the GCU switches the starter generator to generator mode. However, the GCU will not allow the generator to supply power to the DC buses until the APU reaches its full operating speed. Once full speed is reached, the APU generator can be selected on using its switch light on the APU control panel. Note that the APU generator contactor which is how the GCU controls the generator's connection to the electrical system, will not close if any of the following is true. The APU is not running at full operating speed. DC external power is selected on. A fault is detected in the generator output. Or the APU gen switch light has been selected off. The secondary purpose of the APU is to provide bleed air to the Environmental Conditioning System, or ECS. This allows the airplane cabin to be warmed or cooled when the airplane's engines are not running. Note that external air carts can also be used for warming or cooling, but they are not nearly as effective as the APU, especially during extreme ambient temperatures. The APU bleed system is controlled by a single APU bleed valve. This valve allows bleed air from the APU bleed manifold to enter the bleed air system where it can enter the ECS. The APU bleed valve is controlled by the APU bleed switch light on the APU control panel and regulated by the APU FADEC. If the APU exhaust temperature exceeds certain limits, the FADEC can partially close the APU bleed valve to reduce bleed air load on the APU. This gives priority to the APU generator over the APU bleed system. There are a series of check valves in the bleed air system to ensure bleed air from one source doesn't backflow into a different source. Each source has its own check valve to ensure that air only flows into the system from that source. 
As an additional protection against bleed overpressure, the FADEC will not allow the APU bleed to open if either of the engine bleed switches are selected on, regardless of whether the engine is actually running. Note that APU bleed air can only enter the ECS and cannot enter the wing de-ice systems, as these systems are located before the check valves in the engine bleed lines. The APU bleed is monitored through the APU bleed switch light. Whenever the valve is open, the open light illuminates. APU fire protection is provided by an advanced pneumatic detector, or APD, and a stainless steel fire extinguishing bottle activated by an explosive squib. Both of these work the same way as the engine fire protection system, so please see the fire protection module for an explanation of the APD and fire extinguishing bottles. The APD in this case is routed above the APU and will detect any excess heat in the APU compartment in the tail cone. The fire extinguisher is located in the tail cone and when activated will discharge its contents through several pipes to saturate the entire APU area of the tail cone. The APD is monitored by a control amplifier. This amplifier is connected to the APD and sends out signals to the fire protection panel and other systems if a fire is detected in the APU. When a fire is detected in the APU, the fire light for the APU on the fire protection panel will come on and the APU automatically shuts down. Additionally, the APU shutoff valve will close, along with the APU bleed valve. The APU fire extinguisher will also arm. However, unlike the engines, the APU fire extinguisher will, or at least should, automatically fire after 7 seconds. The APU fire extinguisher can also be manually fired by pressing the extinguisher button if the automatic mode fails or if you don't want to wait the 7 seconds, assuming that the armed light is illuminated. Once the fire extinguisher is discharged, a bottle low light will illuminate once the pressure in the fire bottle drops below a specific value. Note that if the APU fire bottle is discharged, the APU will be prevented from starting again until the bottle is refilled or replaced. The APU fire detection system can be tested by pressing the test button located on the fire protection panel. This will simulate a detected fire and will illuminate all the same lights as well as the fault light on the fire protection panel. One very important note regarding the APU fire protection system. This system runs off the right DC essential bus. This bus must be powered in order for the fire extinguishing system to operate. So anytime the APU is being used, the battery master must be left on. If not, and the APU was the only source of electrical power, when the APU is shut off automatically in case of a fire, all electrical power is immediately lost on the aircraft. The APU fire extinguisher will never have a chance to be activated seven seconds later. So be sure, if you're leaving the aircraft unattended with the APU running, to leave the battery master on. In this case, the damage associated with discharged batteries is considered minimal when compared to the possible damage caused by an uncontained APU fire. There are a number of limitations associated with the operation of the APU. First and foremost, the APU is approved for ground operation only. The APU must be shut down prior to takeoff and must not be operated in flight. The APU must also not be operated unattended with passengers on board. Because there is always a potential fire risk when the APU is running, a train crew member must be on the flight deck at all times to shut down the APU and order an evacuation if necessary. Note that the APU must not be operated at all if the aircraft is being gravity refueled and must not be left unattended during a pressure refueling, nor can the APU be started when refueling is in progress. These are all due to the increased risk of fire during refueling due to excessive fuel vapors and possible fuel spillage in the vicinity of the aircraft. The APU also has ambient temperature limits. The APU must not be operated if the outside air temperature is less than minus 35 degrees Celsius or above plus 50 degrees Celsius or ISA plus 35 degrees Celsius, whichever of those two is lower. The APU starter also has limitations. The APU starter must never run for more than one minute continuously. Between a first and second start attempt, a five minute cooldown period is required for the starter. After a second start, 30 minutes is required for a cooldown period and maintenance should be advised. Starting the APU is a very simple procedure as the FADEC automates the process. Prior to start, power on the APU system by pushing the APU power switch light. You will observe a quick system self-test, which takes about two seconds after energizing the system. This appears as all the lights on the APU panel illuminating in sequence. As well, note the APU fuel shutoff valve is now open on the fire protection panel. To initiate a start, simply push the starter button. It is also a good idea to start a timer at this moment to ensure the 60 second starter limit isn't exceeded. 
The start process is automatic from this point and normally takes approximately 15 seconds. When the APU has reached full speed and is ready for use, the run light illuminates and the generator switch light will show warn, indicating the generator is available, but offline. To bring the APU generator online, simply press the switch light and observe the gen light now illuminates. The load can be verified on the MFD electrical page as well. Press the gen switch again to take the generator offline. Remember the generator will not come online if external power is active on the aircraft. To allow the APU bleed air into the ECS, simply press the bleed switch. The APU bleed valve will open and the switch light will indicate open. Pressing the switch again will close the bleed valve. Remember the APU bleed valve will not open if either engine bleed switch is selected on even if the engine is not actually running. To shut down the APU, ensure the gen and bleed switches are in the off closed position and press the APU power switch light again. This will close the fuel shutoff valve and remove power from the system, allowing the APU to shut off. The APU has a fire detection system that should be tested daily to ensure the fire detection system is working correctly. Depending upon the airline, some test it before the first flight of the day, while others test it after the last flight. When the APU fire test button is pressed, you should observe 10 lights illuminate if the system is working properly. On the fire protection panel, 5 lights should illuminate. Valve closed, and note that the valve open light will go out. Bottle arm. The extinguisher switch light. The fire light. And additionally, the fault light will also illuminate. Additionally, you will see the master warning and master caution lights illuminate on the glare shield. These lights illuminate because the check fire detect warning light and APU caution light illuminate on the caution and warning light panel. And finally, you'll also note that the fail light will illuminate on the APU power switch light. It is very important to note that the APU fire test does actually close the fuel shutoff valve. If the APU is actually running when the test is performed, as might be the case when you test it after the last flight, the APU will immediately shut down. There are a few abnormalities associated with the APU system. The most critical of these is an APU fire. Regardless of the failure, always follow the appropriate checklist. In the event of an APU fire, the APU will shut itself down. The master warning light will illuminate and the check fire detect warning light also illuminates. A quick look at the fire protection panel will show that the APU indicates a fire and that the fuel valve should have been closed automatically and that the fire extinguisher is now armed. After 7 seconds, the fire extinguisher should discharge automatically. This is indicated by the extinguisher and bottle armed lights going out and the bottle low light coming on. The only action that needs to be performed at this point is switching all the APU switches off to ensure the system is fully powered down. Of course the fire department should probably also be notified and an evacuation considered. Note that if the bottle does not fire automatically after 7 seconds, it should be fired manually. The FADEC monitors operation of the APU at all times for possible faults. When a fault is detected, the APU caution light illuminates to draw attention to the fault. If the fault only affects the starter generator, the starter generator is automatically taken offline, regardless of switch position, and inhibited from operation as long as the fault exists. The gen switch can be cycled to attempt a reset if the fault was transient. There is also a possibility of an APU starter failure, where the APU starter generator becomes stuck in starter mode. The only solution to this is to remove all electrical power from the aircraft to stop the starter from turning. For almost all other APU faults, including gen overheat or any other fault, the APU will shut itself down automatically to prevent system damage. All that remains to be done by the pilot is to again ensure that all switches are powered off to fully isolate the APU. Depending on the nature of the fault, a restart could be considered. The APU on the Dash 8 is known to be a bit temperamental. They are known to shut down automatically for all manner of issues ranging from generator problems to simply a strong tailwind causing back pressure in the exhaust system of the APU. Consider the cause of the fault and be sure to respect the starter limitations if you decide to attempt a restart. This concludes the current module. We will now conduct a brief review. I suggest you prepare to pause the video as each question is displayed and attempt to answer it yourself before the correct answer is revealed. Let's begin.
This concludes the current module. I hope you found this information useful. Please ask any questions you may have in the comments section below. And please subscribe to the channel to be alerted when more modules are complete. Thank you for watching.